And the problem is this, that it was Daniel Pearl who made the initiative. He was the one who went up to Gilani. He was the one who tried to find the fixer. He was the one who went after people rather than people going after him. That is one question. So the initiative came from him rather than from the other side. At what point did it become a plot? What was the plot? And two, having done all your investigation, having been to Pakistan, having read the, the transcript, are you any wiser as to a, is um, Umar Sheikh guilty? And if he's guilty, what is he guilty of? And who is the one who actually killed Daniel Pearl? The, if you could take those two questions, I mean, that would be it. Uh, first question. Of course, Daniel Pearl uh, took initiative, wanted to see Gilani, and so on and so on. But this does not prove anything. Uh, of course, um, if ISI wanted, if some elements of ISI wanted to make an example, they did not go to, to, to Sheraton Hotel to take somebody in his bed uh, completely um, uh, out of everything. They, they took a journalist who, was, uh, who took some risks, who whom they had some reasons to, to, to get in the trap and so on. They took advantage of the, of the way of being of Daniel Pearl, of him maybe not being completely careful and so on. They took advantage of that. But it does not uh, prove that, um, that they did not want to, to, make, uh, to make an example. The scenario which we can imagine is, uh, is an Omar Sheikh uh, crossing the road of Daniel Pearl through his fixer, through another fixer and so on, you know the whole chain, fighting this man, speaking with him, feeling the good current, the good, uh, the good um, communication between him and, uh, and the journalist, finding that he's a member of a high, big, uh, prestigious American newspaper and finding that it was a good target and maybe ref and surely referring to his superior to say I'm in contact with an American journalist, Wall Street Journal, good guy, what do you think? Yes, not bad. Okay, you think you could? Ah, maybe. And so on. things can proceed like that. Uh, it does not mean that um, a, to have a plan does not mean that you do not take advantage of the circumstances. The two go together. M my opinion is that Dan uh, Omar Sheikh is uh, strongly responsible of all that happens, guilty of the abduction. Uh, guilty to have uh, kept him in custody, and this is a big guiltiness, of course. But he's not guilty of everything. And I don't believe that he took the decision to kill him. I think that at one moment, many plots, various plots interfered with the first one. And that I think that Omar Sheikh was overwhelmed by others' plots, others' decisions, including the decision of finish and of killing. I think that maybe at day number three or day number four, he was unplugged of the whole story. Unplugged, you know what I mean? And that the direction of the operations was taken by somebody else, other forces, maybe above him. A. B. Who took the response? Who, who killed? Who held the knife? This remains a mystery. There is a theory, as you know, recently issued by CIA 
saying that it is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed himself who came the last night and who made the killing. Maybe bef because Daniel Pearl was on the fourth subject, fourth topic of inquiry, investigation of uh, about Mohammed himself. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't see Khalid Sheikh Mohammed doing that himself, too high rank in the hierarchy of Al Qaeda. And the, I told you before that I read the testimony of Fazal, of Fazal Karim, which is the only concrete testimony we have of the whole story and of the scene. He describes the, Yeme the Yemeni, the Baluch Yemeni, who did the murder. It does not look like uh, Mohammed. It does not look like. So I don't think it is him. In my book, I, I, I evoked the hypothesis and I excluded it. Who did it? I think it is still a mystery. Fazal Karim knows he's in jail. Uh, the people who interrogated Fazal Karim know. We can, we can suppose that. But uh, they did not say. We'll know one day. I think we still don't know. In your book, there are many, many uh, quotable passages where I think I like the writing personally. And um, you have dealt with some of the, or most of the points that I have raised. But I picked out three short passages which I think are particularly beautiful. And I was just wondering if you would do me the honor of just reading those two, three little paragraphs. One was, um, page one, one, just from the facts up to there, to Europe. The facts are there, and as always, they are stubborn. This enemy of the West is a product of the West. This fervent jihadist, Omar Sheikh, was formed in the school of enlightenment and progress. This raging Islamist who will shout out at his trial that he kidnapped Daniel Pearl because he could not stand anymore to see the heads of Arab prisoners forcibly shaved in Guantanamo. This radical who will go berserk at the very idea of being judged not according to the Sharia but British law is a product of the very best English education. This character is both, is both foreign and familiar to us. Here is the radical and banal nature of evil described by Anna Arendt, which concerns us because it has the unsettling strangeness of my roles. Is terrorism the bastard child of a demonic couple, Islam and Europe? Daniel Pearl was kidnapped and then murdered by Islamist groups who were manipulated by a single fringe group of the secret service. The most radical, the most violent, the most anti-American of the factions fighting for control of the services. But how can it be denied that this faction behaved from the beginning to the end of the affair as if it were perfectly at home in Musharraf's 
Pakistan. This crime was not petty, a murder for nothing, an uncontrolled act of fundamentalist fanatics. It's a crime of state intended and authorized, whether we like it or not, by the state of Pakistan. Daniel, Daniel Pearl's killer is not just linked to Al-Qaeda. He is not one of the innumerable Muslims around the world in vague allegiance to it. He is the favored son of its chief. He is a man with responsibilities in the organization's command cell. He is a crucial character in the arm wrestling match that the new barbarians have started against the democracies of the world. And this is how the Pearl Affair takes on its full dimension. What about Shamzai? How, how do you know about Bin Nuri? What's evidence that there is? Because he said he's been to France and he's been to Europe. Who? Been to this Marana Shamzai. Yeah. Why is, how do you know that Bin Nuri has this reputation for that Omar Sheikh could have stayed there? And was, I, I know that he has stayed there. I know that he stayed. How? I, the, the source I cannot quote, I cannot say. Okay. Why? Because Shamjai denies? No, we didn't ask him, because uh, I didn't go to the interview. But he, he says, how have I got this reputation? He says what? That the reputation of Bin Nuri, Jamia. He said, there's no evidence that we give training that the jihadis meet in the Bin Nuri Mosque. Would you like to say something about that? Or? I cannot say more than what is in the book. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you feel um, I didn't uh, touch on uh, the relationship between the United States and Pakistan? They must know a lot more. Um, perhaps you should just quickly address that and then we'll wind it up. That's one, okay. Okay, so what is your question? Do the United States know wh what went on? Why haven't they sought the extradition of uh, Omar Sheikh? And what is the future of the relationship between the United States and Pakistan? You know, in this story of terrorism, you have two, two committing suicides. Suicide? Suicide? Suicide, you say? In this story of terrorism, you have two committing suicide. You have the kamikaze, the human bombs, who commit suicide. And you have the, United, the America, who committed suicide too. When they armed Talibans, when they built the Saudi, Arabi Saudi power, when they channeled so many billions of dollars to Pakistan, when they helped ISI, building their monstrous, their huge and monstrous system of power, it is as committing suicide. You have two suicides. Why do they do the kamikaze suicide? Mystery. Why America suicide? Another mystery. You have two suicides together. They know what is happening in Pakistan. They know what they did by building this golem, this monster which has become Pakistan. Beautiful country, with beautiful people, but with a regime which is one of the most, maybe the most dangerous in the world today. America did let this grow. Now, I hope it is not too late. It is not too late. 
but it will be difficult to, to treat the phenomenon. It will be difficult.